Now, the UN has warned that over 30,000 people are at risk of death by starvation in the war zone regions of South Sudan. A report by three UN agencies says tens of thousands more would face famine in the coming months. It added that a 22-month civil war has intensified the extreme conditions. The report calls on warring parties to allow aid agencies to have unrestricted access to war zone regions. A new UN report shows nearly 4 million people now face severe food insecurity in South Sudan. The world's youngest country has been plagued by violence since December 2013 when fighting erupted between pro-government forces and rebels loyal to former Vice President Riek Mashar. Well, to discuss that further, we're now joined by Jonathan Ofeyansa, who is the publisher of Africa Briefing, and he's joining us live now via Skype from London. Thanks very much for joining us here on Press TV, sir. Um, you know, I, whenever we hear about the South Sudan and the you know, famines or war there, it's it's sad, isn't it? Because this new country came to, came into being with so much hope. Yes, it's a, a very sad situation. I mean, um, when they got their independence in, um, I think, 2011, there were high hopes. You know, for that country, and that uh, for it to, you know, to descend, you know, into this sort of situation, is an indictment, you know, on the, the state of the political situation in the whole of Africa. And, and many people would argue, uh, sir, that you know that this is just growing pains that that new countries go through this sort of thing. How do you feel about such arguments? Well. Um, I have mixed feelings about such arguments, you know. They don't necessarily have to go through that. It's just a struggle, you know, for control, for power between two personalities. And at the end of the day, it is the innocent civilians, the innocent people, you know, who suffer, you know, from the outcome. Right, and obviously, you know, there have been several rounds of talks between Salva Kiir and Riek Mashar um, in order to try to solve the situation permanently. Uh, do you think there is light at the end of this tunnel? Well, I see light at the end of the tunnel because, um, well, both parties, you know, have signed the peace uh, accord in, uh, I think, Ethiopia. And I think uh, there's some willingness, at least, on the part of Riek Mashar, you know, to see, you know, the full implementation of the accord. And the government itself of uh, President uh, Savakir have also come out today, or was it yesterday, you know, affirming their willingness, you know, to make sure that the peace accord stands. But what needs to be done now is for the relevant authorities to allow, you know, the aid agencies to get to the affected areas to offer relief. Because, look, they are heading towards the harvest season. There's no sign of any harvest, right? And in particular, the areas of uh, Jungle and the United States, you know, are the worst affected. So if they allow access to these areas by the relief agencies, it will go a long way to avert any uh, major um, humanitarian and um, farming disaster. Okay, we'll leave it there at that point. But of course, we do appreciate you taking your time out to speak to us today. That was Mr. Jonathan Alfeanza, who'd been speaking to us live via Skype from London.